Let me ask you a difficult question. Yeah, yeah. What is, what does it mean to worship lead? To worship lead. So because you say that's what you wanted to do. Yeah, yeah, worship, yeah. For you, you know, I'm trying to be like, okay, fine. What, what does, what does that mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I actually didn't know that I wanted to be a worship leader. Not that I wanted to do it, but what people call worship music mm -hmm. is what made a lot of sense to me. And to answer you what worship leading means is being at a point where through your life you point people to Christ. It's a ministry that points people to Christ. I should be able to be telling you about pointing you up to mm -hmm. Jesus in everything that I do. That's from a basic believer point of view. But using music, because now that has been coined mm -hmm. as music, song leaders have been called worship leaders because there's this ex expression. I don't mind using the word worship leading. It means creating an atmosphere of exposing you to who God is, to God's heart. Mm -hmm. What that means is I paint God to you. So when I tell you God is good, so that you believe it. I need to know that really he is good. <laughs> okay, it's true. <laughs> you know it's true. <laughs> and I drew him to you. Now, worship leading has very little to do with how I feel the song. It's about God is this person that I believe in. Whether you like it or not, he remains a good God. Mm. You get what I'm saying? He I remains guess. a good God. So, here, here he is. So let me sing songs to draw you. Let's sing together, Lord, you are good. And let's face together. I'm just guiding you. That's what I was mm, I get what you, you mean. Know? Yeah, so because so of So I know that, some of you are having a hard day today and you don't mean, don't whatever. Yeah, but yeah. You sing the song. Sing, yeah, yeah. You sing yeah. the song. Yeah. And now, because of what we, we've talked about, the story, my story, and everyone has a story, matters about, of God are process-based. They don't just happen overnight. You don't just wake up and you have a Lamborghini. <laughs> well, it can happen. But it's not like it's not instant like that. It is a walk. Some walks have long walks. Others are painful. I'll start with a biblical story, then I go into now practicality. Mm. Moses in the Bible was this mm. girl who got the Ten Commandments. But by the time he was even getting those Ten Commandments, yeah. by the time even he was going back because he had run away from Egypt. When he ran away from Egypt, after growing up as this guy in the yeah. palace, mm -hmm. he was about 40. Mm -hmm. He goes and runs away and banished from there, runs away so he's not killed because of a uh, crime he committed in Egypt. He stays another 40 years. Yeah. So he's coming back to Egypt. When he's in that burning bush where God told him to go back, he's 80. The guy who led Israel, that the entire nation of Israel goes back to and reads Torah, the guy was 80. <laughs> the guy was, you get it? I get it. Those are processes. Now, what does that mean practically for, for someone, I mean, to understand music ministry, and that's why I'm very passionate about it. For you to, before you express that music, that art that you have, there needs to be a process that speaks to this person through your gift. The thing with music is that we have gift. You can run and create a gift and mm -hmm. it becomes a product. So when I'm having a, an iPad like this, it's a product mm -hmm. that is, is from an industry mm -hmm. and it can be made however sort you can get it. And if I wanted to create a product, I can create it even right now. Mm. I can create something, just give you those goosebumps and nice and give you, I can sing about anything. Baby, I love you. <laughs> I can do it. Yeah, it's true. So you don't know that it's my baby or it's... <laughs> it's got, I mean, it's got my baby. <laughs> baby <yeah. laughs> but you see, it's funny. <laughs> when you understand that God, what he wants first is him, you and him, the purpose for life and creation is that God wanted fellowship with human mm. beings. First, then now, the tools that is given us to communicate that, ideally, are supposed to communicate about who he is so that he receives all praise and glory. Simple. So whether you become a hit wonder, the question goes back to, what is it? Is it, your, is it the, the story about this person? Or is it what I want to feel mm -hmm. with this wonder? And for me, 
what I find difficult is when we celebrate the, the, how the song feels. There are, many, there are many times even in church culture where someone is choosing a song because it feels good. Because it just feels good and sing it. Mm. Then, or to, to the next level, it would be songs that not necessarily give God glory. They just make you feel nice. Mm -hmm. They have a place. Some songs like those have a place. They are songs that you declare who you are and so on. Mm. But as far as I'm concerned, you need to tell me what, who God is because of what he has done in your life. I've suffered losses. I've lost my mom. I've lost my mother-in-law. I've seen people close to me die under very unfair circumstances. Mm. But in those times of tears and crying and asking why this has happened and angry, God still remains good. Now you need to be at a faith level that sounds crazy. And that's mm -hmm. what the Bible says that matters of faith are foolishness to the world. Yes. A girl would think you're so foolish, mm. but there's no one else I know. Me was brought up knowing, seeing my parents love Jesus in a simple way. And I said, me, I can't see this Jesus. But there's something that he gives you and he gives you so much joy. He looks so calm. My mom's beaming, glowing face. Mm. I realized there's something deeper, but I can't explain it. But when I received it, I was like, this is what people need to know. So when I lead people in worship, I want them to see God and create an atmosphere where he's revealed to them. Mm -hmm. Because once God is revealed to them, when you have faith enough and is revealed to you in many ways, either through the word of God, either through some spiritual thing that you see, you worship. Mm -hmm. And there are many instances in the Bible where when they saw who God was in his glory and who he is, either through creation, through the stars. I'm, I'm a girl who's fascinated by galaxies and mm. stuff, and I read all those things. You just say, you're great. You're a good God. Mm. That's the thing that gives me the ultimate joy in life. By the way, the greatest, my wife one time asked me, what's the thing that gives me the most joy? Is seeing people worshiping God, full stop. People worshiping God, surrendering their lives that it's not their life, it is God's life. Because I've seen people who think that we are what on and you've come to them and they receive Jesus, and they, you know, because there's something supernatural that happens. And when, you're, when you receive that freedom, then you go and share with the other people. Why should I hold it? Hold it, yeah, mm -hmm. there you go. So I don't even know why we went here, but I think, I think for me, I would say for the modern Christian, because now when I came, when I started now, when I settled from Daystar and started settling into church and I got to... So what, what church did you go to? I go to the International Christian Centre. No, at that, that time now you, when you're looking, because you, you, you left the story at, you then, uh, we, we got here because I asked you what about worship leading. Yeah, yeah. But now where did you find a base yeah. worship lead was ICC? Yeah, ICC. I joined, immediately I joined International Christian Centre, ICC. It's been my church since. 97 around that time before I finished on the verge of finishing Daystar and and I joined the worship team and the story goes that you know on that we did many projects wrote a couple of songs uh, there and then then there's an affluent story that began from there but my church has been ICC led worship there mm -hmm. that's why I started now coming to the forefront I used to arrange music you know yes when I was at Daystar I used to arrange music select songs for the set, give Reverend Tom, you'll be the worship leader. Yes. We do our job with Moniki. Um, then Andrew Moniki and myself joined the ICC after that. We mm -hmm. Bandwagon. We released Reverend Tom to go do his... Uh, he's an Anglican reverend now. Yes. So when we went to Moniki and joined um, ICC and other sing, ex-Sing African people, we exploded the place. <laughs> then I found my childhood friend that we grew up together with and we were taught by the same piano teacher after many years. Her name is Rachel. She was the music director at ICC. <laughs> Serving, uh, you know, uh, helping out. And that time, Jack Odongo was the main pianist. At ICC? Yes. Whoa. We used to meet at the Fungamano house where now Mavuna downtown meets. Jack Odongo was there. So this is us. <laughs> Because now that arms. is piano now. Now, now <laughs> I thought I had reached with the Jewish, was the Jewish. Here is it. <laughs> so, so some of us are caught up between worshiping the Lord and staring at His <laughs> and quads. staring at this man. And that time there was no drum kit. This is another interesting story about ICC. 
down the road from where we were meeting was Nairobi Chapel that I idolized with Care Mind, mm -hmm. all that. Then we've done an album. Not Mamlaka. Yes, not yeah. Mamlaka. They have full. Oh, hold on. ICC was at Ufungamano, Ufungamano House. House. Yes. So it's not it's not ICC on Mombasa Road. No, 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 no. This it is ninety. They were in Ufungamano House from nine. I think 89 or something. They used to meet at, at Silver Spring or something. I'm yeah. not sure. Um, sometimes at oh yeah. But when you like joined, the, when I was joined, I was yeah. yeah let me not go to history. <laughs> when I joined, I was it was at Ufungamano House. That's crazy. I didn't know that. And I knew about them because because they helped us with equipment and we were doing our first Sing Africa concert mm -hmm. in '97 at Kenya National Theatre. The pastor there just said, "I know a few of you guys. I don't know you, but here have our equipment." At Funga Manor House. And I said, This is a good church. My friends go there. But I was still going to Nairobi Chapel to see what <laughs> Kama is doing with Kina Koros and Chris yeah. Okana and Dennis Kwanda, who was playing the drums. But Nairobi Chapel had a full gear, a full gear. Sorry. And then down the road at Funga Manor House, there's only a piano. So. The only difference is that Jack O'Dong was not a piano. <laughs> so you don't care whether it's a drum kit or not. I mean, gosh. <laughs> yeah. The, and now next, uh, the rhythm used to come from another keyboard. So that the keyboard that now was set yeah, to do drums. Yeah. So you literally play. Mm. So my bassist in my band, now I've got a band, which is another story. My bassist, Charles Langat, used to be in the worship team playing. Well, Jack is doing his thing. That's crazy. So, you know, those days, no. Um, Hold on, that is insane. <laughs> Let me understand this. It's not, you know. I know you need to say that. I need yeah, to yeah. just stop this because yeah, from yeah. a musical now, this is the music. The musician yeah, yeah. me getting a bit excited. Yeah, yeah. Jaco Dongo is playing keys. Yes. Like like this, for example. Yes. And then there's a guy, there's a guy on next. another keypo another keyboard. Another keyboard. Yeah. But it's he, it's not the the preset. No, it's not preset. It's not the preset that no. he just presses play. He's, he's doing. He's actually playing yeah, yeah. hi hat. Yeah, he's doing that throughout the the whole set. That is insane. Yeah, and we had the set of like 30, 40 minutes. And there's a season where we had this worship, uh, this senior pastor who used to just used to flow. He comes and says, I'm not preaching today, let's just sing. So lots of music. Yes, that Yo, guy used to be there. That doing is crazy. They had the master. don't know, the C can be the kick. The kick, yeah. The D is the yeah, yeah. hi-hat. Yeah, yeah. So the, that was... And the, in that time, the, the, they were using a Roland D20. Oh, man. Roland D20. Do you know a group called Limit X? Yeah. Who do I know a group called Limit? <laughs> so Limit, I'm sure I no, no, say, it, say, it, say, it, say your version of you Limit can, X. You can refer to your interview with uh, Pete. So Limit X used to do their arrangements on D20. Mm -hmm. So that kind of role on D20, the first albums. And I think Dr. Pete mentioned that in, in the interview that he did. So we had a keyboard like that at Daystar, at, um, at ICC, yeah. the Fungamana House. That's the one they used to play now. It was left for percussion. That's insane. Then, you know, uh, Jagodong is there. My life is in you, Lord. My hope is in you, Lord. My strength is in you, Lord. Is in you, is in you. Hey! I'll praise you with all of my heart. Oh. That's crazy. Jack. That is so, crazy. So now, after Jack now handed over to the younger guys who are now at that time, I'm not I'm not even there, but I know I know my childhood friend who is now the music director, mm. Rachel, and she picked up and helped grow the worship team. And then now it was time to move to the new premises in 2000, September 2000. I think that's when we moved to Mombasa Road. I had asked to be away from. I just wanted the time to be fed and just relax from all I've done. My friends would tell me, come and join the worship team. I said, no. But when we moved to Mombasa Road, I joined them. Mm -hmm. And I joined them in a very interesting way. I went to attend, I went to Nairobi Lighthouse Church mm -hmm. one day to attend a crusade uh, by Dr. Perry Stone, mm -hmm. a, f a famous um, preacher and teacher. And T. Nanzuki. <laughs> was in the worship team. No, she had left Sing Africa, we finished day yeah. she joined Lighthouse. And it's the first time I ever heard this song. This, uh, no, 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 you're all I want, no, it's not that one. It was, uh, this is the air I breathe. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think Mark Lamb is me that sang it yeah. after, but this is the original version because it was before W. Smith sang. Well, before it got popularized. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, Michael uh, popularized it. Your holy presence, Tino singing. In City Stadium and the meeting. And Pastor Don Martini's wife, the senior pastor of Lighthouse, was. And for those who people. maybe are from a different generation, yes. we're talking about Rebecca Don's, the Rebecca Don's parents. parents. So the mom used to play the piano every Sunday. She was there just holding those chords. Man, the presence of God was so thick in that place. People got delivered, got healed. I needed that moment. I was in a season where I was just going through a lot, you know, girlfriends, heartbreak. And God was just ministering to me. And I asked for an opportunity in my local church at ICC in Mombasa. Road. I've not had this song on tape or anything. I said, it's stuck in my head. I didn't record it. Mm -hmm. It's stuck from Paris Stones meeting when Tina was singing. And I asked, please, can I sing a song? Because they, they knew me and my yeah, friends at the yeah. worship team, they said they talked to the pastor and said, yeah, during offering, you can come and sing. I sang that song. Yeah, yeah, Based on yeah, what yeah. I'd heard. Yeah. I picked a guitar, sang it on A. This is the air I breathe. I'd not heard it anywhere else. From that day. <laughs> so <laughs> Bishop Philip, and I think I just needed to release some things. People worship. Second service, the senior pastor said, we to come, <laughs> and we are not going to do it at offering. We're going to flow from the last song of the worship set, and, that's, and people are going to give as you're singing this song. From that day, I was called into the office, <laughs> saying, "Man, please come and minister." And I had not sang in a while in front of people, and that's how I became a worship leader in ISIS. Wow. I did not go through, <laughs> did not the go protocol, through the <laughs> protocol, the filling yeah. of forms, and everything. That's how I became. Now, not only became a worship leader at ICC, I also became part of the Rota 4 drummers, part of the Rota 4 pianists. So, I basically became my church boy. Yes. Then, God opened doors as, you know, struggling as a starting out life, and I got a house just near church. Mm -hmm. So, I was in everything, burials, weddings. The people I meet up to today, you sang at my wedding. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's good to know. <laughs> You know, and and just I really look back and say I, I really thank God for Pastor Philip that time, and now he's Bishop Kitoto, yeah. the overseer for the, yeah. the General Superintendent for Assemblies of God, because he just walked with me and helped me. Now I learned a different dimension. Me, I thought I was, I was happening by going to preach mm -hmm. and singing in front of Museveni and singing songs of hope, but God wanted me to just first experience a place where you've got a local church that you edify every time. Edify means you encourage them, you know, those mm -hmm. Christian words, biblical words, that the, a family that comes where you just feed together and help them worship God. And the same thing, when Monique and I are somewhere, <laughs> we start getting ideas. What if, what if we did a concert? <laughs> what, oh if, what if, what Here if, we go. <laughs> here we go again, what if, you know, and, and Rachel, my childhood friend was so gracious. Every time we sometimes now we we'll travel and visit Watoto Church just to travel and meet our friends. Mm. Because by that time Uganda was, you know, we had made friends. Then I go this day in 2002, and as they're doing the, we used to go for their Christmas cantatas. Then they yeah. started doing something called Praise, praise Fest. Praise Fest. I'm going for a couple of those. Yeah, so I went to Praise Fest, and Pastor Gary Skinner of Watoto Church is there singing songs. And that time Hillsong is exploding now. We yeah. are singing, shout a lot, singing everything. Um, and then I, I think, hmm, it's a good idea. So I come and tell Rachel at church. And she's like, I have been praying and asking God what we need to do more as a worship team. This is the answer. So tell me about this praise festival. That's when we started praise festival. So we used to do ours in July. Uh -huh. And then you have a Christmas cantata. This is in ICC in yes. December. So praise festival became a big Thing. We had to do it three days, sometimes four days, and ICC would pack. That's when we knew there was a time when there was a hunger uh -huh. for expression. Then now, to explode it more, Michael W. Smith did his worship album. It exploded. All this, this is the this, uh, yes. great, this, that thing that, that album just went so we'd sing every time. Then all of a sudden, people from Nakuru, Pastor, Pastor Dixon Tuo from Bishop Max Church, things happen in Alvan Gatito, they're happening in, a, in Nakuru. 
and we started now having these collaborations and so on. Then all of a sudden, Celebration Church in Zimbabwe yes, with Tambira. Yes. It's like a season just exploded. And do you know what we used to do uh, in, in um, Praise Festival? We tell people, if you like to join in the congregation, you, you don't have to be only a worship team, but the worship team is the core yeah. of this. If you want to join, come on. So we'd have now people come from the congregation, register, and join the team and then we start a process every Saturday preparing. That's the time now songwriting went to another level. So this day, I used to work with Rachel, my childhood friend. We used to work at yeah. Singer School. I started now teaching. That's a little thing now. God is performing miracles for me to start teaching music. The thing that my mom told me I would do and I refused. <laughs> so it's coming to pass. I keep saying the place that we are right now is a school. It's a school, yeah. So when one day, now we are working on praise festival. Now we've done praise festivals and we're thinking, why don't you record the next one? So we've called Chris Adwa, come and record. Like, come on, let's do this. I'm burning, I'm eating. So one day I just go to the piano. I play a C chord, the last chord that any pianist would think of holding. Like, <laughs> so I start singing, uh, Shangilia. I know way. Eh? Ametenda, Ametenda, Yesu Bada. Mm, sounds, doesn't sound bad.